Yeah, the ones from we're going to be using today, we're going to be talking about uh, trigonometry and different identities we can potentially use. So, first of all, what does the sine graph actually look like? So, this is something that you did yesterday. You should already know off the top of your head, does it start, does it start at 1 or does it start at 0? Well, the sine graph actually starts at 0. Okay, so it starts at 0, it looks like an S shape, and you can actually see here it repeats every 360. Every 360 degrees, it repeats. So suppose we know that the sin of 30, yeah, the sin of 30 is actually not 0.5. So this is what this means, okay? Sin of 30 is actually not 0.5. So you know that. By thinking about symmetry in a graph, okay, how could we work sin 150? Yeah, so how could we work out sin 150? How could we work sin minus 30? So sin minus 30, roughly here, uh, sin 210, this is the next to 30 really, so 210, so 150, I'm adding next to 60, so 30 plus 30. So therefore, what would you think sin 50 will be 150? Well, sin 50 would be equal to 0.5. What would sin minus 30 be equal to? Well, sin minus 30 will be equal to minus 0.5. And sin 210? So sin 210 will be equal to what? Minus 0.5 again. So the cos graph, okay, what does it look like? Does it start at 0 or does it start at 1? Where, what did we say? Well, the sin graph starts at 0, so therefore the cos graph must start at 1. And again, it repeats every 360 degrees. So by looking at symmetry, okay, what would cos 120 be? So cos 60 is not 0.5, so 60 is not 0.5. So cos 120 would simply be what? 120. That would actually be minus 0.5. What would cos minus 6 to be? Cos minus 6 will be 0.5. What would cos 240? Well, cos 240 will be simply again minus 0.5. So the tan graph is just the one that you actually saw yesterday. It looks the most confusing. So first of all, what it looks like? Well, it looks like this. Okay. Suppose that we know that the tan 30, so tan 30 is 1 over root 3. Tan minus 30. So what would tan minus 30 be? Well, minus 1 over root 3. What would tan 150 be? Tan 150 will be again minus 1 over root 3. So what if I told you, okay, solve sin x equals 0.6 in the range of between 0 and 360. What would that actually I'm asking you to do? So solve sin x equals 0.6 in the range of 0 to 360. Well, let's go at 0.6. So, why am I not going on the left-hand side? Why am I only going on the right-hand side of that line? Well, it's because it says the range between 0 and 360. So, the answer is, okay, not as accurate as I wanted. So, these are the two things I've got here. These are the two values. So, if that's 36.87... What would that one be? But well, that will be 143, okay? And we're going to be using this law here. So sin x is sin 180 take x. So in order to work out the other one for us, okay? Sin 180 take x. So therefore, they've done 180 take away 36.87. Now, why have I not used this one here also? Well, the reason as to why I've not used that one is because a question only said to me between 0 
and 360. That's the values that I wanted only between 0 and 360. So remember, make a note of this angle though, sin x equals sin 180 take x. So solve 3 cos of x equals 2 in the range of 0 to 360. Right, so 3 cos of x between 0 and 360. So again, I'm looking between here and here. That is where I am looking to find my answer. So first of all, cos of x is 2 over 3. Cos minus 1 of x is 2 thirds, okay? So 48.119. You would have had to use a calculator, obviously. Okay, I'm not expecting you to know that off the top of your head. Uh, but the problem, what you need to know also, the reason as to why you use the graph, is because you can potentially actually find it. Another solution. Now, whenever you're doing triangles, why are we not using this? Why are we not using between 0 to 360? Well, on a triangle, you only go up to 180 because it's 180 degrees in a triangle. So that's why we'd only consider that. Uh, for this one here, though, the answer is going to be, we're going to be using this angle though. Cos x is cos 360 take away x in order to work out the missing angle here. Solve sin of x equals to minus 0.3. Well, first of all, you would actually do the sin minus 1 of minus 0.3 because that's the only way you know how to do it at this moment in time. Yeah. Uh, and we worked it out as 17.46. Now, I want the answer between 0 and 360. This is where I want my answers. So, in fact, I'm not going to use this one. I need to find what these two would actually be. So, how could I work it out? Sin and cos repeat every 360 degrees. Okay, sin and cos repeat every 360 degrees. So, what have they actually done? Okay. They've done 360, uh, take away 17.46 to work it out. And then what else have they actually used to work out this? Well, they've done sin of x equals to sin 180, take x. So therefore, they've done sin 180 minus the minus 17.46. So this is how they were able to get that one as 197.46. So we've got three different laws that we're using. Sin x equals sin 180 take x. Cos x equals cos 360 take x. And sin and cos repeat every 360 degrees. Tan repeats every 180 degrees. So let's have a look. Solve cos of x equals 0 0.9 and range 0 to 360. So pause the video and try these. So for the first one, First of all, you would have to do this in your calculator. It says cos of x, so I'd repeat over 360 degrees, so then 360, take away 25.84. So therefore, these are the two solutions. Solve tan of x equals 1 and range 0 to 360. x, so they've done tan minus 1 of 1, they've got 45. It repeats every 180, so therefore they've done 45 plus 180, 225. If you added 180 again, you would go over 360 degrees. That's why you don't actually need it. So solve 2 sin theta uh, equals to minus 1.36. What will be the first thing you'd have to do? Well, the first thing you'd have to do is divide by 2. So sin theta is now minus 0.68. So they've worked it out as theta being 42, minus 42.84 because we've simply done sin theta equals sin minus 1, even, of minus 0.68. That's how they got this. And then they've used sin x equals sin 180, take x. And because it's a negative, that's why minus or minus gives you a plus. And again, have a look. It repeats every 360. So therefore, it's 317.16. So we don't actually need this one here because the question says between 0 and 360. So I've got a few questions for you to actually try now. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, there's no worksheet, so please make sure that you pause the video and go in through it or use the PowerPoint that I've actually emailed you. Right, so the answers...
Sorry. Should I write on your work? So trigonometric identities, okay? Using basic trigonometry to find these two missing sides. So sin theta and cos theta. So therefore tan theta will actually be sin over cos. Tan theta is simply sin over cos. You've probably have seen this before, okay? But you need to, you're going to be using that quite often. Using Pythagoras, if this is sin theta and this is cos theta, we can actually get sin squared of theta plus cos squared of theta equals to 1. So basically, all they've done is, it's like saying this is A and this is B, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. That's all they've done. So, solve sin x equals 2 cos of x in the value of 0 to 360. Remember, these are the rules that we can actually use. So pause the video and see you can actually, if you can actually do it. The problem here is that we have two different trigonometric functions. Is there anything we could divide by to get just one? Well, you could divide everything by what? By cos x. So if you divide everything by cos x, you get rid of these. What we just worked out, sin of a cos is equal to what? Well, sin of a cos is actually tan of x. So tan of x is equals to, now we can actually work it out as we did earlier. And these are the two answers. Remember you do tan minus one even of two. You get your solution and then it repeats every 180. So simply add that to 180. So here, in general, when you have a mixture of sin and cos, divide everything by cos. That's a kind of a tip, quite a general tip. So for this one here, solve 2 sin x equals cos x. So therefore, what could we do first? Well, divide by cos to get tan. Now, the problem that I've got is a lot of people actually put 0. If you divide cos x by cos x, you're left with 1, not 0. And same again. Solve cos x over sin x equals to that. So therefore, again, 1 equals tan x, your two solutions. Now, this one here says solve tan squared of theta plus 3 tan theta equals to 0 in the range of 0 to 360. It looks a bit of a quadratic, okay? So what would usually be your strategy if this was a quadratic? Well, your strategy should have been, I'm going to try and factorize. So I'm going to factorize by tan theta. So tan theta equals tan theta plus 3 equals 0. So therefore, this must be equal to 0, or tan theta must be equal to minus 3. Why is that? Well, tan theta plus 3 equals 0, tan theta equals to minus 3. So theta is 0 plus 180, or 108. 0.43 and 288.4. So you've got four different solutions for it, and you write all four. Pause the video and try these questions for us. So you should have solve two square of theta. So again, factorize two brackets. You've got your four solutions. For this one here, says so solve cos square of theta equals to one quarter. So what could you potentially do for this question here? I want it just cos theta, so we square root. But what's really important if you square root here? The plus minus. So it could be plus one half or it could be minus one half because it's square root one quarter, which is plus minus one half. And therefore you get your four solutions for it. Solve cos square of theta plus cos theta equals zero. Same again. So you should have paused the video, by the way. Try the questions. Next one, expand 2s plus 1, s minus 1, hence otherwise solve this. So the reason what they've done is, they've done it in such a way for you to understand that you've got to actually factorise that. So this goes back into this. So 2 sin theta plus 1, sin theta take 1, and simply solving it. So you've got a few exercises to actually do, again. Uh, so please make sure you actually do these and mark them for us.